In the 60s, that was going on in all areas. I remember myself, I have to modestly admit, uh, writing a, an article for the student newspaper at the University of Chicago. And it was called, What is the Function of the University? That was the article. What is the function of the university? What's its purpose? What are we here? Who runs the universities? Who's make, what are we being educated for? And um, then I did one on sexual freedom, which got a lot more publicity, actually. <laughs> and um, they picked it up in a national newspaper. It ended up in New York City, and my uncle was very upset at me, seeing my name in the paper associated with that. <laughs> but there was, in many respects, it was a time of, of breaking down barriers very rapidly and of asking very fundamental questions. And I think there was also, in that process, a lot of destructiveness and a lot of, as one looks back, a lot of stupidity. Uh, I remember, not as it happens, for whatever reason, I'm an enormously stubborn person and amazingly individualistic, which my friends and opponents criticized me for correctly. And it was a period, I remember once going to a party in a room, probably as many people as here, a large room, and people mulling about, and everyone was acting kind of strange. And I found out that I was the only one in the room at that time who was not on LSD. The only person in the entire room who was not on acid. And I think the drug thing was, I was not then and am not now sympathetic to drugs for, for a lot of reasons. But there was, I mean, certainly if you're going to look at the 60s, one can't look at it without the whole uh, drug aspect. Uh, the music, the music of the times was an explosion uh, out of the past. Uh, the issue of sexuality, tremendous changes in people's attitude than had been the case uh, in the past. And certainly, as Rick talked about a lot, the whole war movement. And for the first time, something was happening, maybe the first time in American history, is that large numbers of people were beginning to challenge a war. Now, when I was a kid, uh, and especially after World War II, which, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people in America had felt was a proper war, fighting against Nazism, fascism, and the sense, it was a, a, a shock to everybody. I think that large numbers of people were beginning, that it was not enough for the President of the United States to get up now and say, we are fighting for freedom in Vietnam. And usually everybody always believed those things, but now you had had people, starting with small numbers of people, starting with students, beginning to question it. And the demonstrations would go larger and larger, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, and more and more people would come in, and the kids would come home in body bags. And people were wondering, my lie, you know what my lie was about? American soldiers were accused of massacring Vietnamese people, okay, and burning of villages. Okay, and people began to say, is this, is this the United States of America? And the country became extraordinarily bitterly divided. And finally, as the movement filtered down more into middle America, as they saw their kids coming home in body bags, and as they saw the lives of the presidents being exposed, okay, that, that war broke. But that in itself was an extraordinary time where people were challenging an American war. People were saying, you're a traitor. You're a traitor to your country. America is at war and you're opposed to it. You're aiding and abetting the enemies of your country. That is pretty heavy stuff because, in fact, everybody, nobody wants to be a traitor to their country. And that you're having a nation with people, young men, and then you had a tremendous class division here. As is always the case, it's poor people who go to war. Working class kids go to war and get killed. And the college students were the ones who were demonstrating and, and tremendous tension. The black kids were the ones who were getting killed. Okay. And um, as one reflects about the period, and, and, and one can see the tremendous tension in the air, and gradually more and more people, where there had been few, there were more, there were more. And finally, the writing was on the wall that the American people did not want that war, uh, and the war finally ended. And during this period, you're seeing people, young people again, and of course, if one talks about the 60s, and, and one understands that it was a very youthful revolution, uh, certainly. Uh, and one sees young people looking for alternative ways of living, for example. The whole idea of the nuclear family, mommy, daddy, and kids, and that's what life is about, and there was questioning of that. And in fact, the radical questioning was going deeper than had ever gone before in the country's history. There had been a time, as many of you know, if you read American history, that it goes back from when, where you had a strong socialist movement, you had a communist movement, you had active trade union movement. And basically, those issues were pretty clear cut. What workers were fighting for in the 20s and the 30s, even before that, is basically the right to live with dignity, the right to earn a decent wage, the right to have a union. That's what the fight was. It was pretty simple. It was a basically an economic fight. <coughs> but what happened in the 60s is while the economic issue was there, and people were talking about the poverty in the ghettos, 
problems all over the country. The revolution expanded and became a cultural revolution. There was the understanding that perhaps the normal fabric of American life was